Let's start with a quick exercise. Close your eyes. Imagine a hospital room. Fill the room with bouquets of flowers, a get well soon balloon, cards, and a patient with a constant stream of visitors. What type of illness do you think the person has? Maybe you're thinking cancer. Perhaps they just underwent major surgery. Chances are you probably didn't think of someone with a substance use disorder. Those living with addictions rarely get that kind of support and concern. Why? Because substance use disorder is one of the most stigmatized conditions, where not only is the patient stigmatized, but also the disease is stigmatized and the treatment is stigmatized. Stigma is a huge barrier to treatment and also leads to a substantial treatment gap where only about one in 10 people with substance use disorder actually access treatment. While there are many potential explanations for this treatment gap, stigma is one thing we all have control over. Everyone from healthcare professionals to families to the press can make a commitment to change the language we use to describe the patient, the disease, and the treatment to destigmatize substance use disorder. A lot of stigmatizing language comes down to labeling. Why do we feel comfortable calling someone with a substance use disorder a substance abuser or addict or even worse, junkie? We don't refer to patients with diabetes as sugar abusers. People should not be defined by their disease. People are people. Even journalists are being held to higher standards. In 2017, the Associated Press Stylebook included updates on how to refer to people with addictions. The new recommendation now advises writers to avoid words like alcoholic, addict, user, and abuser, and instead choose phrasing like he was addicted, or she used drugs, or people with heroin addiction. Healthcare professionals should have the same standard. You might be thinking, but why does this matter? Does language really make a difference? Well, in fact, it does. A 2010 study by researchers at Massachusetts General Hospital compared case vignettes that were identical, but changed whether the patient was referred to as a patient with a substance use disorder versus a substance abuser. Healthcare providers were randomly assigned to a case and then prompted to make treatment recommendations. In the group of providers assigned to the substance abuser group, the healthcare providers were saying things like, it's a moral issue and law enforcement should deal with the problem. Compare that to those in the substance use disorder group, where providers recommended that mental health care and other therapeutic services should be offered. The study makes the conclusion, even among highly trained mental health professionals, Exposure to these two commonly used terms evokes systematically different judgments. In other words, one little change in language impacted how providers thought about treating patients. I do want to take a moment to acknowledge that parts of the recovery community embrace labeling. Those going to AA or NA are encouraged to identify themselves as an alcoholic or an addict. In these programs, it's accepted and part of the fabric of that approach. However, we feel that patients should have agency to decide how they view themselves. All the time, patients tell me, Dr. Tetro, being clean is a badge of honor. To which I say, that's great. I'm never gonna use those words with you and will stick to describing what I see rather than labeling. For example, I wouldn't say a patient is clean, but I would say the patient is abstinent or stable. There are many compassionate and patient-centered alternatives we can use. I've already mentioned a few in this lesson. To recap, addict can be replaced by person with substance use disorder. Substance abuse can be replaced by substance use or substance use disorder. I hear this one a lot. Not only is abuse stigmatizing, it's actually outdated. The DSM doesn't use this term substance abuse anymore. Additionally, when referring to drug screens, the results are negative or positive, not dirty or clean. Some other examples are replacing problem with disease or swapping treatment failure with treatment attempt. 
Lastly, we cannot perpetuate the idea that evidence-based medications used to treat addiction are just substituting one addiction for another using terms like opioid substitution therapy. Another potentially stigmatizing term is medication-assisted treatment. Medications are not assisting treatment. They are treatment. Rather, we can say opioid agonist treatment or medications for addiction treatment. Again, these might seem like small differences, but they seek to be more neutral and linguistically shift the blame away from the individual. Don't get me wrong, I slip up. I've said abuse a million times. And while we've tried our best to avoid it, you may even come across some stigmatizing language in this course. After all, changing language requires intentional effort, and it's hard. A good place to start practicing is to check your written communication, so being more mindful of how you write patient summaries. For example, your notes should never say, 40-year-old drug user comes in with endocarditis again. Notes are an area where you can begin to edit yourself, and over time, that can translate into your spoken communication. The fact is, there are going to be a lot of people out there who continue to use stigmatizing language. But part of what we hope for those taking this course is to create ambassadors, those that will model non-stigmatizing language. If all you get out of this course is to use compassionate terminology, that would be a win. It may feel like you're on a lonely island using this language, but it can be all the difference to a patient and to the public perception. As providers, our job is not to cast blame or judgment. Our job is to care for people, to keep them engaged in their own health, and to help them achieve their goals with their care. How can we do this if the language we use perpetuates the stigma that patients with substance use disorders face every day? How we conceptualize addiction and talk about addiction impacts how we care for those with addiction. It's the simple difference between saying to a patient, Ugh, you're using again? Or saying to a patient, I'm so happy you came in so we can discuss how to best keep you safe and healthy. You will learn more about patient-centered language in the next lesson on motivational interviewing.